Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Woo! Ah, I love that song. It just gets the juices flowing. And here we are on this exciting journey through the Beatitudes. I am so excited about this. And no exception is today's talk. The Beatitudes, the power of humility. Now, this is our third beatitude. And our master teacher, Jesus, in, in his life, he spoke Aramaic. And Aramaic is a very, it's still a living language today. There's parts of the world in that area known as Persia and various names. They speak Aramaic. And so there are Aramaic scholars today that bring wisdom to understanding what did Jesus really say. And so we turn to the familiar. We turn to uh, the Bible, and we look at Matthew 5.5. 5. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Now, I don't know about you, but this used to baffle me because growing up in a Methodist church, I thought I had to be poor or broken or somehow less than in order to receive the earth, God. And that's not what this really says. Now, if we look at the Aramaic, blessed is to confer the energy of God upon. It's the activity and energy of God moving through us, conferring the energy upon, blessed. And meek really translates, rather than being meek, which in today's world, meek doesn't actually sound like a very good word. But if you look at it, it more translates as gentle or humble. So conferring the energy upon the humble, for they will inherit the earth, makes a lot more sense. Yes? It really is powerful. Now, I've been using heavily the wisdom of Emmett Fox from his incredible book, The Sermon on the Mount. And he says here, it is a combination of open-mindedness faith in God, and the realization that the will of God for us is always something joyous and interesting and vital and much better than anything we could think of for ourselves. I think this is great wisdom because if we look at humility, we look at being humble, it means that we've we're not attached to outside influence. We're not allowing our inner strength to be affected by anything outside of us. Do you see that? If we look at the great leader of Dalai Lama, one of the things, just I, when I look at the Dalai Lama, I see a humble man. And that humbleness comes from this knowing this truth, that when I can be open-minded, when I can live in the faith of the God of our understanding, and that I can have this realization that the will of God is ever-present and is there for ours to receive to use. Uh, use me, oh God. It's, it's so important that we realize that this teaching is fundamental. That's why I see that the Beatitudes is really a comprises and synthesizes the entire Christian theology, theology. And this is why I'm so excited to dig into it and 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 chew on it for a while. 
Now, another author, she's got a wonderful book uh, about the Beatitudes, Jennifer Kennedy Dean. And she says here, pride has in it the seeds of its own destruction. The meek have the strength to wait it out and to let God work. The meek have learned that pride is weakness and meekness is strength. Now pride, mm, it's kind of a double-edged sword, isn't it? Pride is, it, 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 it can give us the energy to go forward, but it has a price because there's got to be the outcome that we've set for pride. And within that, it brings its own destruction. It, it brings about a cycle of life that we don't want to be part of. We want to awaken ourselves to be present to our strength. And we can do that with our gentleness, with our humbleness, with our willingness to stand firm in our belief and not be shaken by what anything the world is telling us. Not be shaken by anything anyone else is telling us, which means you don't have to listen to a word I say because I don't have any more authority on this than you have with your truth counter in you. You know the truth. And that truth is helping build our strength for there is great power in humility. Turning again to the wisdom of Emmett Fox, he says, this state of mind also includes a perfect willingness to allow this will of God to come about in whatever way divine wisdom considers to be best, rather than in some particular way that we have chosen for ourselves. The difference is, my way or God's way? And I can tell you from the curriculums that I've learned in my life, the waking up that I've had, that when I direct myself by my ego, by trying to puff myself up by a counter Basically, when I came out of the box, when I was born, for the first 20 years of my life, my goal was to be perfect. Absolutely perfect. In everything I did. And guess what happened? I'd be a good little boy, and then there'd be failure, and then there'd be self-flagellation because I wasn't perfect. So I'd get up all my energy again, and I'd go for being perfect. And it wasn't until I realized that the now moment is perfect for however I step into it. And I could direct my life into a seeming ego-perfect, or I could just be and allow. And from that moment, I began that journey to embrace myself just the way I am. And then a whole bunch changed because then I began the spiritual journey of saying yes to God and saying, what now, God? and finding that God was leading me in a way that I had never even dreamed. And I've found that God's way is always the gentler way. I can do it my way, but sometimes that's 
very painful. And that's why I am so excited about this journey with the Beatitudes to awaken ourselves to the wisdom of the incredible teaching of our Master Teacher Jesus. And I had the great joy of studying with the Aramaic scholar Neil Douglas Klotz, and he offers a different translation of Matthew 5.5. 5. And here he says, Aligned with the one are the humble, those submitted to God's will. They shall be gifted with the productivity of the earth. Wow. When we step into that God's will and we align with that guidance that comes through intuition, comes through meditation, comes through other people, comes through what we hear on the radio, or whatever, it comes in so many ways. And how do we be productive? How do we move past our problems, our diagnosis, our difficulties, our, our, the inequities, the injustice? And we know that to be sacred service. And so as people who come to know that through our humility that we are open to God's grace. What next? Next is to, as Tony Baines uh, wrote in her book, Soul Mastery, in regards to this beatitude, those who understand sacred service at a state of being share their talents and time, not to be seen, but for the glory of good for all. And we know this, don't we? Here in unity, we know that sacred service, if we can be of service to others, if we can awaken the light for others, all of a sudden, our problems dissolve, they melt away. And it lifts up, putting others first. And this is why we are calling our event today, Love in Action. Because when we're doing God's will, we are aligning with divine love. And when we share our gifts and our talents with others as prayer chaplains or board of directors or volunteers in the office, or working with our youth, or helping with maintenance or landscaping, whatever it is, those are ways for us to, to be present in humility, to just helping out from whatever our talent, our gift, our, our energy, our passion is. Because it's easy to give away what we already have. Isn't it? And from there, we have a powerful way of being in the world simply by understanding this great power of humility. So I'm going to ask you to consider this as a possibility. This week and next week, we'll have the Love in Action Sacred Service out here. But allow it to be a how-to, a put-into-practice being humble and inheriting all that God is. And so that's the conclusion of our discussion today. And I'm grateful that you're here. Thank you.
Step out on the water 